So now I'm going to present best practice guidelines for mobile usability. So I'm going to show you how you can respond to these key challenges, the differences between screen size, keypad type, and context of use. And I'll show examples of, of sites that follow good practice. I'll also show examples of, of applications that do the same. So we've got here, you know, on the left, a uh, website that I've created by Amazon. It's their home page. And if you try to view this website on a lot of mobile phones, they simply wouldn't be able to do it. They just crash because they haven't got the, you know, the ability or the RAM to be able to show such a, a complex website with, you know, lots of large imagery and, and things like that. So a lot of website, a lot of mobile phones wouldn't be able to look at this PC website. Some more advanced phones like the iPhone, you know, have the ability to show a PC website on them. And it's great to have that ability. But if you look at how it comes out on these devices, it's not actually that easy to use. You know, so we can, ba we can barely make out the images, let alone the text, if we're looking at this on a, a mobile phone. Now, you know, we could zoom into a certain area and read the text in that part of the screen, and then move around and need read the text in another small part of the screen, but it's much slower to do that, and much more difficult that it is, and, and frustrating than it is to, to view this website on a PC. So if you're serious about having a mobile website, especially if about doing e-commerce on a mobile phone, then it's important that you create a version of your website that's optimized for mobile phones. It's going to be easy to use on mobile phones. When someone comes to your website, you want to detect what kind of device they're using and then automatically send them the appropriate version. So if someone's coming to your website using a PC and you detect that, then show them the version of your website that's designed for PCs. If someone's coming on what we call a feature phone, which is a, a basic mobile phone, then you want to show them automatically a very basic um, version of your website. So you check they're coming on this phone, you automatically send them a very basic version of your website. So they'll have a lot less content on the page, um, the images will be very small and compressed. And that means that those people with those phones will be able to see your website. Now if someone comes on a smart version, a smartphone, then you want to send them the version that's designed for smartphones. So here you can be, um, you know, you can be a little bit more, more generous in what you give. So you can give some more information, you can have larger, nicer images that will give a better browsing experience. And by having these three different versions, you'll be able to reach the, the broadest you know, customer base, base as possible, um, and more people will be able to see your products online using a mobile phone. So, when it comes to creating a mobile optimized version, as I mentioned, one of the first things you're going to do is have to show less content. Um, and you have to show you know, a lot less content. So it's really important that you decide you know, what are the top priority key things on every single page. And those are the things you're showing your mobile optimized page and the other things you remove. Um, now it might be, sound quite drastic and you have to be quite disciplined about it. So if you look at Amazon for example, um, you can see there's quite a lot, of, you know, a lot of going on on their PC optimized website. But if you look at the mobile optimized version, we can see that you know, all they've really got on there is the search box, you know, some uh, links to the best sellers, and a drop down list for the product categories. And that's pretty much it. Everything else has been removed, you know, and it all fits into now you know, one small um, screen on a single column layout. And by doing this, they're left with something which, which is much lighter, quicker to load, and easier to use on a mobile phone. Now the other thing to bear in mind is differences in, in the keypads and the way people interact with the website on different types of mobile phones. So on the left we have a traditional mobile phone with a you know twelve digit number keypad. And on these people typically you know browse up and down a web page using the joystick or directional keypad. Now there's no separate cursor. You know, like when, when we're browsing on a PC, we have a mouse, and we point the arrow at a certain link or button, and we click to say, that's what we want to, to click on. These sorts of mobile phones don't have anything like that. Instead, as people scroll down the page using the joystick or the directional keypad, the browser automatically selects links 
you know, so if they were to browse down now, it automatically select the electronics link and then the video games link, and it does this automatically. Now, it may sound like a simple thing, but a lot of websites actually don't highlight well the thing that someone is about to click on. So when we've done testing in our labs, you know, people have been unsure of you know, what is actually highlighted at the moment. If I press the joystick in or press the center button, you know, which link am I going to click on? Which web page am I going to go to? So obviously it's really crucial that you highlight things. So for example, by adding a background color, adding a border, um, you know, changing the font color, making it bolder as well. These are sorts of you know, visual things you can do to make, make clear what's being highlighted. Now when someone's browsing on a touch screen, they don't have the same difficulty because you know, we do have a cursor, we use our finger and we, and we put our finger on the link or button that we want to press. However, therein lies the difficulty because our fingers aren't precise like a, a mouse is on a PC. So it's very easy and very common to try to press a link, but actually we accidentally press the link that's above it or below it because things aren't spaced far apart enough. So when designing for touch screens, it's important that you know, things are spread out like links or when you use things like buttons that you have a large clickable area. So buttons should be quite large so that we're not going to press one by mistake. Uh, we're going to press the one we intend to. So when you're designing for mobile phones, it's important that you accommodate both types of um, you know, interfaces, whether it's keypads or touchscreens. The next difference when designing for a mobile phone is how you deal with the navigation. On PCs, the navigation will typically go across the top of the screen or down the bottom left, or a combination of the two. And on any page on your website for PCs, you know, no matter what page people go to, they generally see the navigation in the same place at the top on every screen. Now, if we look at um, a mobile phone uh, app here, like we have from Mercado, you can see on the left that the, the navigation, you know, browse for shop, uh, search for product, products you buy the most, it takes up most of the, most of the screen, the middle of the screen. Now, if when we get to a product page like we have on the right here for bread, if the navigation appeared you know, in the same place, then all the, the products would actually be pushed down, down to the bottom of the screen, which isn't a great user experience then. So it's important to not repeat the navigation at the top of every page. Instead, what you can do is, as I've done here, you can see above the, uh, towards the top of the product page, they have a, a button which takes people back along their journey to where the, to where the navigation is. So having these sorts of browsing controls on the page make it easy for people to get back to find the navigation. The other thing you can do on a web page is allow people to scroll to the bottom of the page and the very bottom you can repeat the navigation there because it's not an important part of the page you know, it won't detract from people seeing your products. Now finally in this section it's to bear in mind what I talked about earlier which is the context of use. When people are browsing the internet on a mobile phone, they'll often be a lot more focused and have a specific task or action in, in mind, more so than when using the internet on a, on a PC. So it's important to understand you know, what are the goals for a customer on each page, what are the actions they want to do, and present those actions to them straight away. So if you look on the left here at Barnes & Noble, the US bookstore's website, you can imagine that what people want to do there is either find a product or find a store. And those are the two things that come right at the very top of the page there. You know, that's how priority these, these has, how much priority these key tasks are given. If you look at Travelodge, you know, when you go onto their site, you know, you're straight into the booking form. You know, it's really, really task focused. If you imagine when you go onto eBay, you know, what you're going to be doing is either looking for a product or it's probably checking the status of the things you're you're doing, you know, things you're active in, such as what the products you're watching, the things you're, you're selling, or the things you're bidding for. So this kind of interface allows people to carry out those key tasks of, or find that key information straight away when they land on the page. So it's really important to present the key options, the key actions, straight away.